Baltimore's number one news at 11 p.m. is next. Now, live, local, late breaking. This is 11 News Tonight. I'm Rebecca Mesa. She vanished almost five days ago. Now this Baltimore County community takes matters into its own hands. That story coming up in a live report. Tonight, reaction from a man who says he knows the suspect in a fatal hit and run. I'm Jeff Begay's. That story coming up. Also, a Randallstown man is behind bars tonight, charged with killing his mother-in-law and sister-in-law this past weekend. I'm Matt Chablow. A live report coming up. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rob Daniels. And I'm Marianne Bannister. A big story tonight. A young mother vanishes while shopping for her child's birthday party. Tonight's family and friends gather to make plans to take search for the missing woman into their own hands. 11 News reporter Rebecca Mesa is live in Hailthorpe. She has the latest. Rebecca? Well, right all over town, this is what you see. Flyers with Michelle Rust's picture on it. And now the community wants people to post the same picture on the back window of their car. They will stop at anything. They'll stop at nothing, rather, to bring this young mother home. Their voices hide their pain, a pain that comes from seeing this face, the face of 24-year-old Michelle Rust, not here at church, but on flyers like these posted all over town. Michelle vanished almost five days ago. She left her Hailthorpe home at 9.30 Saturday morning to pick up supplies for her son's third birthday party that afternoon. She never returned. Her minivan found Saturday night on Clyde Avenue in Lansdowne, less than 10 miles from her home. As you can imagine, it's very difficult for me to be here. Norm Rust is Michelle's uncle. He and other members of the Halesworth Community Church gather to pray for answers. He says the most difficult thing for the family is the unknown. To not know, to not hear, to not have any idea because it was just the assumption, of course, that she was going to the store and would be right home. Eager for information, members of Michelle's church plan to look for her themselves. Anybody that is willing and physically able to be here, we're going to do some searching. And that searching, that searching will take place Saturday morning. If you would like to help, you can meet at the Halethorpe Community Church at 1312 Francis Avenue in Halethorpe at 9 o'clock Saturday morning. Members of Michelle's immediate family were too distraught to be at tonight's prayer vigil. And Baltimore County Police say they have no new leads in the case. If you have any information at all, you're urged to call Baltimore County Police. Live in Halethorpe, Rebecca Mesa, WBAL 11 News. Tonight, Baltimore County Police are asking for your help in their search for a hit-and-run suspect. A high-speed crash on Liberty Road killed a motorcyclist on Monday night. The 11 News reporter Jeff Begay joins us live from police headquarters with the very latest. Jeff. Marianne, today, police released the suspect's picture. Take a good look at it because they're hoping that the public can help them track this suspect down. Tonight, I talked to a man who knows the suspect. He says he should turn himself in. Gordon Booz's face might not look familiar to you. We hang around, chit-chat a little bit. But this man says he knows him, he doesn't want to be identified, but he has a message for Booz. Would you want him to turn himself in? I would want him to, yeah. Why? Because uh, he don't need that, he don't need that in his life. You know, just, just the right thing to do. Do the, do the crime, do the time. Police have been looking for the suspect since Monday after the car police say Booz was driving plowed into Walter Robertson on a motor scooter. It happened at the busy intersection of Liberty Road and Washington Avenue. There were several witnesses. Um, I was sitting there and I saw um, a BMW come up from out of the traffic and he was coming so fast I thought he was going to hit me. Mm -hmm. And then I remember seeing something come across me and then all of a sudden it was an explosion. I saw an explosion and all the debris fall flying around. Police have already searched the suspect's home, found his belongings, but they didn't find him. They went into that building thinking that he may be injured um, as a result of the accident. Um, when they went in, they saw some mail and things of that nature that had his name on it. No sign of him. No sign of him. Gordon Booz, 6 feet, 175 pounds. If you spot him, give Baltimore County Police a call. At this time, he's charged with 12 counts of traffic violations in connection with this fatal hit and run. Reporting live in Towson, Jeff Begay's 11 News.
A Randallstown man is behind bars tonight, charged with murdering two of his own family members. Prosecutors say the victims were set to testify against the suspect in a sex abuse case sometime next week. 11 News reporter Matt Jablow is live at the newsroom. He has the tale for us. Matt? Rod, you got it right. Vernon Parker Jr. was scheduled to stand trial next week in Baltimore County. Prosecutors say he sexually abused his sister-in-law. It now appears that Parker will soon stand trial for murder in upstate New York for allegedly killing his sister-in-law and her mother this past weekend. Would you think that he's capable of murder? No. That was the general reaction from residents of the Northeast Baltimore neighborhood, where 32-year-old Vernon Parker Jr. was arrested early Wednesday morning. He seems like he's a very nice person. I mean, he works, and he has a nice house out in Baltimore County, near Randallstown, and he's a very nice person, always manly and everything, and I just can't picture him doing something like that, you know. A truck driver and bounty hunter and the father of two young girls Parker has been living with his parents here in Northeast Baltimore for the past few days. He's now staying at the Baltimore County Jail, charged with shooting to death his wife's 50-year-old mother and 14-year-old sister at the victim's home in Binghamton, New York. It's absolutely horrible. Uh, it's every prosecutor's worst nightmare. Baltimore County prosecutors say Parker was scheduled to stand trial next week for sexually abusing his wife's 14-year-old sister, Devin Spears, during a visit several months ago to Parker's Randallstown home. According to prosecutors, those charges will now be dropped because the murdered 14-year-old was the only witness to the alleged sexual abuse. He took matters into his own hands so that he wouldn't have to go to trial. He's alleged to have murdered uh, the, the sole witness against him and her mother. You know, you try not to take this stuff home, but when something like this happens, it affects even the most seasoned prosecutor. Parker is now being held without bail at the Baltimore County Jail. A hearing will be held on Monday regarding his extradition to New York State. Live in the newsroom, Matt Jablow, WBAL, 11 News. Thousands of mourners are saying a final farewell to Samantha Runyon tonight. Funeral services for the five-year-old are being held in a California cathedral at this hour. Many of the mourners know the little girl only from her photograph. She was kidnapped from outside her home and murdered earlier this month. Alejandro Avila is charged with Samantha's murder. And the family of a seven-year-old Philadelphia girl, they're certainly grateful to have their child back home tonight after her great escape from the kidnappers. Erica was snatched from a street corner in her Philadelphia neighborhood on Monday night. She was left in a basement 10 miles away. Police say she chewed through duct tape on her hands, feet, and head in order to get free. And then climbed through the littered building to cry for help. I heard her screaming for help. They went up on a porch. She was looking out the metal slot. And she, she bust the first window. I bust the other one and ripped the screen while I helped her get out the house. Erica had only minor injuries. Police are looking for two suspects, James Burns and Edward Johnson. They say the motive in the kidnapping was money. 24 people killed in 25 days on the streets of Baltimore. Now city leaders are scrambling for answers. But the emphasis on fighting crime has led to some infighting over the root of the problem. I team reporter David Collins has the very latest. What Mayor O'Malley calls low conviction rates coupled with light sentences for gun crimes, is fueling his new gun court monitoring initiative. We can't expect neighbors to be courageous and step up and be witnesses if we can't do a better job of putting gunmen behind bars for long periods of time. The mayor's plan has the backing of the business community. He wants citizens to sit on gun cases from start to finish to keep track of convictions and sentences. We encourage citizen participation. City State's attorney Patricia Jessamy says if police did a better job of investigating, convictions and sentences wouldn't be an issue. See, one statistic that you'll probably see, the higher the arrest rate, the lower the conviction rate, because the investigations are not what they should be. The mayor became incensed that a prosecutor didn't show up for the bail review of the man accused of wounding 10-year-old Tevin Davis last week. Jessamy says her office was never notified. The police department failed. O'Malley used statistics to make his case. The conviction rate on gun cases has dropped from 77 to 61 percent. And 69 percent of the time, he says, sentences are below the maximum. I don't know where he got his figures from. Business leaders, community activists, and elected officials packed the mayor's news conference in support of the court monitoring program. This is a new civil rights movement, and this is a human rights movement. But noticeably missing from this major announcement, City State's Attorney Patricia Jessamy. She simply wasn't invited. Well, you know, I've been doing this long enough not to feel slighted. I have a job to do, and I 
feel personally as though I have contributed greatly to the decline in crime. The city state's attorney's office is already training folks in Bolton Hill and some west side communities in court monitoring. The program could easily expand citywide, Jessamy explains, provided there's money and resources. David Collins, WBAL, TV 11 News. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average soared to its second biggest point gain ever. The Dow rose more than 400 points and back over 8,000. The Nasdaq was also up. Investors took heart from developments in the scandals that have been plaguing corporate America. And another scandal unfolded today. The founder of Adelphia Communications and his two sons were arrested in New York. The men, along with two other executives, are charged with looting billions of dollars from the now bankrupt cable company. Adelphia has cable systems in Carroll and Frederick counties. And tonight, AOL Time Warner disclosed the Securities and Exchange Commission is looking into a series of transactions that boosted that company's revenues. Chief Executive Richard Parsons said the SEC is conducting a fact-finding inquiry into several transactions and that the company is cooperating fully. I was basically starving to death. Um, and that's, that's when the decision was made um, to reverse it. A weight loss procedure used by some celebrities didn't work for a Maryland man. Donna Hamilton shows you the medical problems he's now facing in a special health alert. Also coming up, a surprising new use for Viagra. Find out how it could help sick children. And did Congressman Travikin get out of his jam, or is he out of Congress? The answer is still ahead. A couple showers still showing up on InstaWeather Storm Tracker, but are we going to pick up the rain we need? Well, we'll check out the InstaWeather forecast in detail in just a few moments. That's a live look from the Marriott Waterfront. Tamara, yesterday the downtown reading hit 100. Today, a high temperature of only 83. InstaWeather's coming up. Live, local, late-breaking, you're watching WBAL-TV 11 News tonight with Rod Daniels, Marianne Bannister, Jerry Sandusky with sports, and your insta-weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Tom Tasselmeyer. 11 News Tonight continues in a moment. Tonight, Jay's all new with Kristen Slater. Comedian Sarah Silverman go to Venice Beach for the ultimate and beach game. And Alan Iverson's newest endorsement. This is the latest Alan, Alan Iverson shoe. These are called the incarcerators. These are exactly the same. And tomorrow, Jay's got Austin Powers himself, Mike Myers. Then on Conan, Alan Cumming. All news tonight. At Coons Baltimore Ford, choose any in-stock Coons Ford Explorer, Windstar, or F-150 and take $6,000 off or take it in cash. No need to negotiate. If a sticker reads $19,000, take $6,000 off and you're buying a new Coons Ford for only $13,000. This weekend only at Coons Ford in Baltimore. It's a weight loss surgery made popular by celebrities like Roseanne Barr and Carney Phillips. It's called gastric bypass surgery. Great results most of the time, but not for one local man. 11 News' Donna Hamilton has a story of his two-year ordeal. When we first met the Keithleys in June of last year, Jim Keithley had already lost over 130 pounds. It was something he felt he had to do. We couldn't do a whole lot with the children. Uh, work was, was tough. Just, just carrying around the excess weight was tough. I had medical problems. Jim had tried every diet, and at 345 pounds, he was desperate to get the weight off. That's when his doctor told him to think about gastric bypass. Jim had the surgery in November of 2000. The procedure did what it was supposed to do. Yes, I lost weight. Jim's life had changed as promised, but not in the way he imagined. Jim could no longer keep a bite on his stomach, much less enjoy a normal meal. I would see him take a swallow of water and vomit it back up. From the moment Jim awoke from surgery, he was overwhelmed by terrible nausea. The doctor kept telling him, it's going to go away, it's going to go away. But today, 18 months after his gastric bypass, the nausea is still there. I've been nervous boy ever since. More than 47,000 bypasses were performed last year. The surgery basically reduces the size of the stomach to a small pouch. A loop of intestine is attached so that it can empty, and the surgery works. Dr. Thomas Magnuson isn't Jim Keithley's doctor. He's the chief of general surgery at Johns Hopkins Bayview. Jim did not have his surgery at Hopkins. The operation is usually around 80 to 90 percent successful, and that 80 to 90 percent of patients um, will lose enough weight to reverse the medical problems they had or to prevent future medical problems from forming that are related to obesity. He says patients need to realize there are risks. Death is rare, but a possibility. More common are infection, bleeding, blood clots, and injuries that may require additional surgery. And additional surgeries have become a part of Jim Keithley's life. 
Doctors reversed the bypass. I was basically starving to death. Um, and that's, that's when the decision was made um, to reverse it. And he's had six other surgeries, but no relief. He would get up in the morning and just dry heave. You could not even stand next to him because it would make you sick just to listen to him. He would heave if there was not even anything in his stomach. And every single night, he would vomit. Today, Jim Keithley lives by medication pain relievers, antidepressants, and anti-nausea medications. Expensive stuff. Without this stuff, I'm doomed, I'm telling you. Medicine has enabled Jim to eat enough of a mostly liquid diet to get by, but he's still afraid to eat when he's away from home. And the worst, no doctor has offered him any real hope of ever getting any better. Jim knows that for most patients, this surgery is successful, but he wants people to know it can go badly. I'm probably in that small percentage. But, uh, man, when it does, it does. Now, doctors warned Jim that if he had the bypass reversed, he'd gain back all the weight. He's only gained back about 75 pounds because of the nausea. So who's a good candidate for gastric bypass? Well, here are the criteria which Jim met. Adults who are at least 100 pounds overweight or have a body mass index of 40 and have tried and failed all other treatment options. Donna Hamilton, WBAL 11 News. For more information on the risks and benefits of gastric bypass surgery, you can log on to the WBALchannel.com and then click on Health Alert. Tonight, a possible different use for the impotence drug Viagra. Doctors are giving babies and children the medication in hopes it might help them fight a rare, life-threatening lung disease. Scientists believe the tiny blue pill might be helpful for pulmonary hypertension because it causes the blood vessels to expand. Tests are still being conducted. For only the second time since the Civil War, the House of Representatives purged itself of one of its own members tonight. Within the last hour, members voted to expel Democratic Representative James Traficant, the flamboyant and eccentric former sheriff from Ohio, is awaiting sentencing for corruption. Traficant is, is scheduled to be sentenced on Tuesday in federal court in Cleveland. From the 11 East of Weather Center, here's Chief Meteorologist Tom Tasselmeyer. Well, when you're 14 inches below normal rainfall, the stuff we had around the region today doesn't help a whole lot, but what it does is it blocks that strong summer sun and cuts down on the evaporation so we don't lose a lot of soil moisture and the vegetation doesn't continue to dry up. So even though we're not making progress as far as rainfall amounts, yeah, we caught a break at least today from what typically happens in summertime. And the rainfall totals at least were a little bit heavier in a couple spots. Like on our Insta Weather Neighborhood Network over at Milford, Delaware, a third of an inch of rain over there today with some uh, slightly heavier showers. All of these totals are since midnight, so a lot of that could have occurred even before daybreak and then the light sprinkles we had in the afternoon. But just a couple hundredths from Perryville to Easton down to Leonardtown and back toward Hancock and most other locations, not enough that we could even measure in the neighborhood rain gauges. Temperatures today, now remember yesterday, up near 100. Today it was a struggle to get into the 80s in many areas. Milford, Delaware, with those showers, didn't even make it to 80. They had a high of just 79. A little warmer from Easton down into southern Maryland. Cool stuff in the mountains. Highs today only in the low 70s. From Kaiser, West Virginia, down to Elkins and out around Deep Creek Lake, they had a high temperature of about 69 degrees today. A much different weather pattern thanks to the cool front that went through. Switch our map. I'll show you where summer went. Summertime temperatures went way out west. Salt Lake City today, 100. 109 in the deserts of California around Blythe. Denver hit 95. And how about a toasty 98 in Billings, Montana, compared to just 86 for the high today in Miami. So Billings, Montana, much warmer, much warmer than the beaches around Miami today. The cool air in New England has been pushing south into the mid-Atlantic region. And where that cool air is pushing south, that's where we see most of the rain and even some thunder along the front, which has now become stationary right on the southern part of our map here down along the Virginia-North Carolina border. High pressure is pushing down out of Canada with some comfortably cool summer-like air. But the winds are coming out of the east and northeast, and for us, that means moisture comes in off the ocean and piles up across the uh, eastern slopes of the Appalachians, so we're getting some light showers and sprinkles. And as we head toward morning, there's likely to be a little bit of fog, too. Insta Weather Futurecast shows that most of the rain, the darker green shades, stay either west or south of us through the day tomorrow with that front stall down there. But with the winds continuing out of the east, we've got to at least mention the possibility of a shower popping up. And then on 8 o'clock in the morning Friday on our Insta Weather Futurecast, we see some heavier showers to the northwest. It's another weather system that will be coming in here Friday afternoon, and that's when our best chance for showers or thunderstorms will be, at least for the next couple of days. So tomorrow morning, still a break from summertime. Temperatures 60s and low 70s, some sprinkles and fog. Sun coming up at 601 behind a cloudy sky. Then tomorrow, just 77 to 82 for the high temperature as the east wind continues. 
And like today, a couple of spotty showers popping up in the afternoon. There's your day forecast. The winds may occasionally get up to two or three feet, averaging out mostly around a foot with an east wind and the water temperature holding at 80 degrees at the Thomas Point Light. 69 for the high in the mountains tomorrow and only 80 in southern Maryland. If you're planning your beach weekend, looks like some unsettled weather to start the weekend, then lots of sunshine on Sunday. Our Insta Weather 5-day forecast, 30% chance of showers tomorrow, 50% chance of a thunderstorm Friday afternoon. The showery weather may last into Saturday, and then it gets hot and humid again on Sunday and Monday. Coming up on 11 News, full speed and full contact sports. Check your health coverage up next. We are taking you out of bounds. I'm Sade Veteran Wild. Tomorrow morning on 11 News Today, a new study brings word of caution for golfers with heart disease. Research finds it could put a strain on the heart. The details in our health alert plus traffic and weather together every 11 minutes. We start at 5 a.m. The 11 News OC Insta Weather Report is sponsored by Clean Air Heating and Air Conditioning, your local Bryant dealer, doing whatever it takes. Don't miss Artscape July 26th through the 28th and stop by the WBAL TV 11 booth for your chance to win a pair of round trip tickets anywhere Air Trend flies. The only place to register is Artscape July 26th through the 28th. Superstore pricing comes to Glen Burnie. Effective immediately. JBA has become the official Chevrolet Superstore. Superstore inventory. Superstore pricing. Now 0% financing for 60 months. JBA Chevrolet Superstore. Redefining how car buying should be. Do you count the days until your monthly depression, severe mood swings, and irritability are gone? If you experience these or other severe premenstrual symptoms, there's now a research study for women with premenstrual dysphoric disorder, or PMDD. If you're between 18 and 40 and not taking oral contraceptives, call 800-92-TRIAL today to see if you qualify. Again, that's 800-92-TRIAL for more information. Only the best deserves to be showcased. And at the Chrysler Showcase, you'll see our most award-winning lineup of cars and minivans ever. Now, take advantage of 0% financing for up to 60 months and save up to $6,700 on select vehicles. Plus, get Chrysler's 7-year or 70,000-mile powertrain limited warranty on the hardest working parts of your vehicle. So check out the Chrysler Showcase. With great savings and selection, there's a little something for everyone. And it's all at your Chrysler dealer. What you're about to see may disturb you. It is the 18 reported crop time, 72 hours. What a war of the world. Don't be afraid. Mel Gibson. Signs. Rated PG-13, August 2nd. Here with 11 Sports is Jerry Sandusky. The Toronto Blue Jays keep loading losses onto the Orioles' record like Noah loading the Ark, two by two. For the second week in a row, the Jays sweep a two-game series, 5-2 Toronto over the O's this afternoon. You have to like rookie Howie Clark. They tell him to hit and run, he listens. Even on a pitch out, unfortunately, directions didn't include a stop sign for Melvin Morris. Should have stopped at second, nailed at third instead. O's just did not help their own cause today and a long day for Melvin Morris. Sixth inning. Jays had the bases loaded. Carlos Delgado with a grounder. Luis Lopez with the error. Chris Woodward with the run. Toronto with the lead. Two to nothing. In the eighth, Jays patted the lead. Josh Phelps up the middle of the infield. Delgado green lights it around third. It's 5-2 Toronto. O's had a chance in the ninth. Two runners on. Two outs. Melvin Mora at the plate. Like I said, long day for Melvin Mora. Toronto beats the birds. 5-2. Day off for the O's tomorrow before heading out on the road. And that loss came midweek and it only adds to this year's woeful Wednesday for the Orioles. On Wednesdays this year, the O's have a 5-11 and 11 record. They obviously have lost at home run derby against opponents as well, and it looks like everyone out hits them in the middle of the week, too. The worst news, they have nine Wednesdays with games left this season. Now, you may notice something Sorry. unusual about the Tiger Royal highlights. highlights. Doesn't seem like everybody going twice as fast. That's how it looks to the people in attendance, too. Detroit and Kansas City finished in about an hour and 41 minutes. Fastest game in the majors in almost 20 years. Tough on announcers, too. You can barely get your breath around all of this. We shall see. It hits the 463 double play to end it. Tigers win it 3 zip. And I'm glad we don't always play baseball quite like that because it's really hard to keep up with everything. Hmm. Well, no matter how hard you work today, pretty good chance Lance Armstrong worked even harder 
He used today's toughest leg of the Tour de France to all but ensure his fourth Tour victory. The chapel along the way probably serves as a prayer stop for some riders. Heaven help me get up the side of these mountains. 111 mile leg today features three mountain climbs. And at the end of it, Armstrong had stretched his overall lead to five minutes. He continues to wear that yellow leader's jersey. After tomorrow's final stage, the course winds downhill before finishing beneath the Arc de Triomphe on Sunday. But for some in the world of sports, every day seems uphill. Nothing goes quite right. Everything misses the mark, and all plans go awry. And we have a special name for the place we keep those memories stored away. And Miss Marianne, what would that name be? Well, I guess it would be called Out of Bounds here. Indeed it would. Not what she wanted to say, but she's playing along. An outfielder <laughs> who can't hold on to the ball is not always a problem. An outfielder who can't hold on to the glove, now that, my friends, is a problem. Of course, getting a glove on the ball is a bigger problem for some guys than others, but the creative fielders still know how to stay a leg up on the competition. Mm. Then again, trying to use your leg to cover for shortcomings with your glove is probably the kind of thing that causes as many problems as a skull. <laughs> I always wondered where team mascots came from. The answer never dawned on me until I finally saw family night at the ballpark. <laughs> Let me tell you about the business. I think the reason they call it a hard catch has something to do with how your face feels oh. as it oh, lands on the man. ground. Your truly talented fan knows how to balance his priorities and still say that new addition to the souvenir collection. By the way, attendance at tonight's game in Florida, 38,000. Unfortunately, 37,000 of those on hand were killer bees. And finally, that sign about objects in your mirror being closer than they look is only half the story. It should also mention something about the oh. trip to the hospital being a lot closer than you think as well. You're supposed to get out of the way. Ideally. If not, you get knocked out of bounds. Out of the way. <laughs> Tom will be back with your seven-day forecast check. This portion of 11 News is sponsored by Red Lobster. You love seafood, we love seafood. Red Lobster, go overboard. Here's the Insta Weather 7-day forecast. It doesn't look a little different. It <laughs> does. I don't know yes. what it is. Okay, yeah, I'm, are we I'll get my magnifying. Are we <laughs> <below the bounds? laughs> this is your weather in miniature, exactly. Chance for a thunderstorm Friday and Saturday, back to the hot, humid Ooh. stuff Monday and Tuesday. I like the border. Sure, you took us out of bounds permanently. If it seems like that graphic is squeezed down, the problem is in your TV set. It was fine. Yeah, it's just raining. The Tonight Show, Trey Leno's up next. Good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Eleven News Closed Captioning is sponsored by Verizon.